Hey there everybody, it's me, it's Undead Viking. I'm coming to you uh, semi-live from my game room in my basement in Moorhead, Minnesota to do yet another one of these little video things that I've come to enjoy making and hopefully you've come to enjoy watching. Uh, today I am doing a Kickstarter uh, preview, review, if you will, uh, for a game that is just has just under a week uh, left on its Kickstarter uh, uh, program. Um, and they're trying to meet their goal, and I'm hoping that um, if this is a game that you'll enjoy, you'll go and back that, and so that game can be published. I don't have a box, because I have a prototype version of the game, uh, so I can show you maybe the front page of the rules that I got. Obviously, these are not going to be the rules that you uh, receive. These are uh, very, very nicely written rules, mind you. Uh, but you know, obviously just a bunch of papers that are stapled together. Actually, you know what? Uh, when I got these, they uh, they weren't stapled together. I had to use my own staple. So yeah, thanks a lot. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so uh, this is the this is the game of the card game of Oz. I don't know why they had to name it the card game of Oz. Maybe there's already a game called Oz and they couldn't uh, call it that. But um, this game is, is has a very interesting uh, storytelling mechanic to it. Uh, it's it's about um, the players uh, playing against each other and trying to uh, use the characters uh, from the the books, Oz, and the movies uh, that you very might uh, might very well uh, know. I I'll be honest right here. Uh, I remember seeing the movie Wizard of Oz as a kid. And um, I remember not really liking it that much. Uh, <laughs> I was probably like one of the few kids that didn't. I don't know. Uh, it just seemed silly to me, you know, the entire movie. But regardless, so maybe this isn't the best game targeted uh, towards me. But I mean, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll explain the game here in a little bit, and I'll tell you what I think. But um, so, it, but if you are a fan, I, I I played this with people that are fans of the books and also. Uh, the, the original movie, uh, and uh, they remarked uh, in very many ways um, how much they enjoyed uh, parts of the game that, that, that reflected upon uh, their experiences when they, they both watched the movie and read the books. So, uh, you know, take that for what you will. But the game is is based upon the idea that uh, the players are playing against each other, trying to uh, tell a story in a way um, by moving characters from the story uh, along the different areas of Oz to uh, complete a story. And then once the story is complete, um, you uh, see who told the best story uh, by um, seeing how many people, uh, how many characters they had involved in their story, how many of those characters are still uh, with them uh, after their story is done. And then you value all those characters. And whoever told the best story, scored the most points, uh, wins the game. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, a brief run-through of, of how you play the game. And then I'm going to uh, tell you exactly what I think of the game. And, uh, and then after that's all done, uh, if it's something you like, then I strongly encourage you uh, to uh, follow, uh, go to Kickstarter and, and search for this game. I'll have links, obviously, as well. And uh, you can go ahead and check that out. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, it'll get published and you'll get a brand spanking new copy of this game at your door once it's uh, done. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and show you how to play Oz. Uh, the card, I'm sorry, not Oz the card game, the card game of Oz. All right, All right here we go. I'm going to show you uh, how to play a game of Wonderful World of Oz. I, I mean, Oz the card game, or no, I mean, I'm sorry, the card game of Oz. Why do I keep screwing that up? Anyway, uh, okay, so uh, here we have the board set up before we complete the entire setup. Uh, you can see that there are the two bookends. Uh, these bookends say on one side, uh, The Wonderful World of Oz. On the other, it says The End. Uh, the reason why it's uh, opposite sides. So the idea is, is that you're trying to move um, your character, a prime character, uh, from the beginning of a story to an end of a story. And if you make it to the end, you then flip it over, and then it's the end. So like you've, you've completed that story, and then you total up points. Now, in order to move there, you have to have locations. And so what we have here 
is we have these location cards that have the map of Oz. I should probably put that face up for you. The map of Oz, ta-da, uh, that you can see. And on the other side, we have a location. And like here, this is Clearwater Spring. And then it has some tag names down here, Forest, Water, Exterior, Oz. And humans and, and animals are a vitality plus one. And so uh, what that, so each one of these will have uh, a location and then the effects listed below. And also sometimes the color of the border, in this case this one's blue, might have an effect if, if a certain card says blue cards uh, affect this card in some way and so on and so forth. And so what you do, I'm going to shuffle these up again before we uh, place these down so I don't know that that clear water one is right there. All right, so we take these and we place them uh, like so. And you're going to place six cards like that and so those that's like kind of the way you your path if you will uh, so you have to go through those six six spots and so to begin the game um, each player will get uh, five of these story cards so I'll just one two three four five one two three four five and so uh, determine the first player regardless however you're gonna do it and so I'll, I'll just these are the first player's cards. And so you can see he has Oz, the Great and Terrible, its character, Human Male Prime. So this is one of those prime characters that if you can get him from the beginning to end, it signifies the end of the game. This up here is how many points it costs to introduce this person into your story. And this is their vitality. If the character is ever reduced to zero vitality, they are discarded. Or in this game, they're called. They, it says that you archive them. And so you can see here, Vitality is plus two at the Emerald City uh, and locations and may move to and from Emerald City locations regardless of movement restrictions or costs. And so uh, City Life does not agree with me at all. It's an event. Archive all animals at the Emerald City locations. So, and this costs a point. Now, when you play an event, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit here, but when you play an event card, what happens is, is that you place the card face down in front of you, like so. And it can be flipped over at any time, on your turn on, or on your opponent's turn. So in this case, since this one would archive animal, animal characters that are on Emerald City locations, you place this in front of you and what you're doing is you're waiting for one of your opponents to move an animal onto an Emerald City location. When they do, you say, and bam, discard that guy. So that's how events work. Uh, let's see what else we got here as far as cards go. Uh, here's who is Ant M. Uh, once again, it's an event card. Let me see if we got another character in here. Maybe I didn't. Oh, well, an event. There's no place like home. And you can move Dorothy to any Kansas location. I did not get, well, I got an object at least. Objects, um, once again, they have a point cost to use them but it doubles the numbers in the game text of other objects equipped to this character. So if this, if you had a character that had an object that, say, gave them plus one vitality, and if you gave them this, it would double that number. Uh, so it would give them plus two vitality. And when you have an object, let's say I had this guy played, like so, in front of me, uh, and he's at a location, I'm sorry. These locations haven't been revealed, but let's say he's there. When you put an object on somebody, you just kind of... As, as you could probably expect, you just kind of slide it underneath them so you know that that person's carrying the pail, if you will. So that's how that works. But anyway, you're probably wondering, so now how do I get these cards into play? Well, regardless, um, you always get the four blue dice to roll. And when you roll the dice, anytime the X or the mark shows up, that means you get one story point. Now, you can also discard one of your cards or any number of your cards to roll extra yellow dice. Well, I got a bunch of these events, and I don't like this who is on him. So we're just going to discard that one. We're going to put it in the discard pile like so. So I'm going to add one yellow die. So I'm going to roll these five dice. We're going to see what we get. I did really well. I got four story points. So now, with my four story points, I can play Oz, Great and Terrible. He costs two. So I place him over here. Because I start left to right when I tell my story. And with my two points, with I have two points left over because he costs two to introduce. You can, for two points, t take one of these location cards that's been revealed 
and replace it with another location card randomly drawn uh, from the stack here. Or you can use the ability to, like, I can put that, this pail uh, on there. Or I could, if I wanted to, I could, you know, like, play this particular event. I could pay one, and that, just in case that person ever gets down. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and place this event in front of me like so. You know, ooh, it's ominous. You don't know what it is. That's cost me one. And I still have one point left to spend. And you can always spend one point to draw an extra card. So I'll draw one extra card, see what I got here. Oh, bread and butter. So now this is equipped human is vitality plus one. And so if I put that on there and I get this pail on that guy, look at that. Just like I said, plus one vitality, but double it so he gets plus two vitality. So that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna place those down like so. And after you've done uh, placing the cards and doing what you're going to do with your story points, you get to do a free move. So let's just go ahead and move uh, Oz, the Great and Terrible, to this location, and I get to turn over the location card. So you can move them backwards or forwards, and it's a free move. You can just do that. And what do we get here? It's the Storm Cellar, small black hole. It's farm, interior Kansas. Uh, magical events and effects and objects may not be played. Uh, characters are vitality minus X, where X is the number of characters in this location. So, this would technically hurt uh, Oz if, if there was a ton of people in that location. And it would reduce his uh, vitality. But he's got a vitality of three, there's only one location, so you know, only one person there right now, so that won't discard him or, or hurt him to the point where I lost the three vitality he has. So there we go. I've revealed that location and now the other player gets to go. So I haven't looked at their cards yet. But let's see what they got when I deal, dealt those cards out. Oh, the silver shoes, an object, green glass spectacles. Oh, Bach, the wealthy munchkin. He's a minor character but he's still a character I can play. And here we have, oh, we have Field Mice. There's a character, once again, minor. But they're not affected by movement restrictions and may carry one other character you control with vitality. And, okay, let's see what else we got here. And finally, Bejeweled Silver Oil Can. Uh, equipped Metal Character is Vitality Plus One. Well, I don't have any Metal Characters. And, but, so let's just go ahead and we'll discard that for an extra die. So put that over there. The other character gets five dice again. We'll roll these. I only got three with, with the second player. So uh, the second player looks through. That's Where are my characters? He's only one to add. So let's go ahead and, and place the munchkin down. And he's vitality is plus one at Blue Oz locations and vitality is plus two at farm locations. So we take the munchkin and we'll place him like so. And now, uh, if I wanted to, I could spend, since he was only one to place, I can. I have two left, I can actually spend one to move him, or I can get that free move as well. But, um, you know what, I'm just going to draw two cards, because I didn't get really good cards at this guy, so let's see what we got here. Um, uh, King of the Winged Monkeys, that'll be nice. He costs four to put in, but he is uh, flying, which means that he doesn't get affected by the locations that they go. And... Um, you know, so he will be very useful for me. And makeshift ladder. Well, I don't know about that. But regardless, these cards, you know, once again, it's like if you play lots of card games, certain cards will obviously have certain synergies with each other, and so to speak. So we will move the, the munchkin to that location. We'll see what location we get. We got Emerald City Plaza. And it's Emerald City Exterior Oz. Uh, one extra story point is required for each character to enter unless equipped with the green glass spectacles. And green Oz characters are at vitality plus one. So he's not getting any bonus, but remember, if Oz can get there, he's actually going to get some bonus because he's he actually is at home, obviously, in the green Oz locations. So we go back to the first player. Now the important thing to note is that now that you have a character out, as first player, you actually automatically get a yellow die for every character you have out. So the other player will now go, and remember we have those cards that we can place that'll uh, you know help out Oz. So we'll roll these. We're not going to discard anything. I got three X's, and that's perfect for me because that'll allow me to equip both of these particular things, both the pail and the bread and butter. So we'll go ahead and put those objects under Oz. 
So now he's got plus two vitality. And then for my free move, I'll move him to the next location. We'll turn to look at this. And it's Bach's home. Hey, there's Bach right there. Maybe you can get to his house. But Bach's home, it's a farm, interior house, good characters, have vitality plus one. So we'll go ahead and put that there. Now, I'm not going to just keep going and going. Obviously, um, you know, the game is... Now, this character might be saying, well, I need to get a prime character in play. I need to get more characters in play. But the whole point is, is that just because you finish the game does not necessarily mean you win. The way you score points is the vitality of the characters that are still on the board when the game comes to an end. And so right now, obviously, I'm winning because this guy, not only does he have three, but he has two more because of the fact that he has that particular situation. If I can get, because of the, the two objects that they have, if I can get him to here, that means that he's actually, um, because of the fact that his vitality is plus two at Emerald City locations, he's going to have even be worth two, even two more points there. Which means it might actually be useful to just get him to this location in Emerald City and just plant him there. Of course, then the other player can make sure that they change that location by spending two points to change that Emerald City Plaza to something else. Much like if Bach were to get here, he gets bonuses for being in the blue spot. And so, you know, obviously I don't want him to get that, so I'm going to spend two points and change that. And so you can see there's a kind of a give and take and a flow to the game where you're trying to put yourself in a good position to win, but also, you know, knowing when to, the time is right, I guess, to end the game. And that's one of the things I really like about the game, that there isn't like a real set number of turns, um, you know, there, but there is a, uh, a, a sense of urgency, because you not only have to uh, make sure that you yourself are doing well, uh, you have to make sure that um, you're doing, at least, at the very least, at all times, better than the person across the table from you. And uh, so I hope that kind of explains to you how you play this, uh, the card game of Oz. And, uh, and, and, and like I said, it, it's, it's very fast playing. You can tell that, you know, even though I was explaining as I went, the, the turns are going fairly rapidly. And later on, obviously, when you fill out the board and you have multiple characters on either side and multiple objects, the, the, it can bog down a little bit. But for the most part, the, most part, the game is very, very straightforward and, uh, and it is very quick to play. So, all right, well, let me tell you exactly what I think. A long time ago, and this is completely, uh, totally, and as, as an aside, a long time ago, um, I had a, well, I shouldn't say I had, he's still alive. Um, I would go and visit cousins in, uh, in western North Dakota. And um, this has nothing to do with the card game of Oz, but I do apologize. And I don't remember uh, much about going there, but he had a game um, that was um, like the Guinness Book of World Records board game. And one of the things was uh, to, weightlifting was you had to put, like, dice together. And smish them together like this, and raise them above your head, and back down to the table, without them scattering out. I don't know why I just thought of that. Anyway, uh, so um, Oz, uh, the card game. So uh, just I I, I, don't, I don't think I mentioned it during the gameplay. Um, the components that you saw, obviously. Uh, these aren't going to be the dice uh, in the game. Uh, I can't guarantee that all what you saw uh, was going to be what the final game is going to look like. However, uh, the art on the cards is, is absolutely amazing. And um, I, 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 I have every uh, belief um, that the artwork that you, you saw on these particular cards um, will look just as awesome uh, when, when, when the game itself uh, is published. So, um, what did I think? Uh, you know, it's a pretty straightforward game. Um, you know, I, I like card games, uh, a great deal. Uh, however, um, you know, they can tend to, um, uh, you know, I can grow stale of them, uh, after a certain period of time. And I was really worried, I mean, when this game kind of showed up at my door, um, and, and then I was asked to, to do a review of it. I was a little worried because, like as I said, I'm not a big fan of, of Oz. I've never read the books. I mean, I remember seeing the movie as a kid. It was in public domain, so they, you know, I grew up without cable, uh, and so uh, when it was, you know, Sunday afternoon and you had nothing better to do and you're clicking through the four channels that you had access to, inevitably uh, Wizard of Oz would be playing <laughs> at some point. And 
But I never really watched it. I wasn't a big fan of the show. And, um, and you know, I mean, I, I got it. I understood the whole deal. And I thought it was neat how um, the they lived in black and white, you know, in the normal world. And then when they went to Oz, it became colorful. But I never, you know, it didn't, it didn't, I don't know, it, the, the whole premise of the movie never really excited me. I mean, I guess, like, at the time when I was watching it, um, I was playing, like, Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. And so for a fantasy story for me uh, to, to be exciting and interesting, it had to have goblins and orcs. And I always wondered why um, the, 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 the Tin Woodsman or whatever, why he wasn't chopping people up with his axe, you know, so, or, or the lion ripping people apart. Obviously, okay, he was a coward, but still, I mean, come on, Woodsman, that axe, you know, but anyway. So I, I was a little uh, a little hesitant, uh, you know, because I didn't know if the game would appeal to me. But, I, you know, theme aside, the game is really engaging. Uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, the, the hand play. I really enjoyed the card management. Um, I enjoyed, the, you know, the, I, I liked the events of, like, putting that card down in front of you. Uh, admittedly, you have to play with people that have played the game a few times before, so, you know, they will be hesitant, um, you know, because they don't know exactly, you know, what you've placed in front of you and then you've hidden. And, and so um, there is that familiarity with the game that after you've played it enough, you might be wondering, well, which uh, uh, event did that person get that just cost them two story points to do it? It could be this card, it could be that, and so on and so forth. And so I, I did like um, that portion of the game. I, and I did like the fact that it isn't so much a race uh, to get to the end. It, it's it's a race to, to get close to the end, but then making sure that you have enough power uh, backing your story up before you hit the end. And, and so you can make sure that you're beating the other player. And so it becomes a game of um, strange attrition in a way because you're, you're kind of watching and you're, you're mentally figuring out, okay, I think he's got 17 points right now uh, and I've got 20. So I need to get one of my prime characters and finish off my story. And, and then, but then you won't get it at that point, and then so a turn will go by, and and you know your opponent will play a card that will knock one of your your characters out, and now you've got 16 points, and you've got that character that's close to the end, but now you don't want to move them that extra spot, and so now you have to figure out a way to either knock them down, or or, or you know put more points on the board and square. So it's 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 a weird, fun little give and take uh, tug of war aspect that that is highly competitive. Yet not, um, you know, in-your-face competitive kind of thing. It's, it's a very family-friendly game, obviously, because of the theme. And obviously, um, just because, you know, your characters aren't dying. They're being archived, which, you know, means what? You know, you're putting them in the back of a book or whatever. And, um, you know, and, and it's... My daughter really, really liked it. I mean, it, it, it was tough to explain to her, but she's five. You know, and I was trying to explain to her how the cards work. But once, you know... Um, uh, it was one of those things where, you know, my wife would help her, and, and i play the game with her, and, and, you know, she really enjoyed it. She liked, you know, the color recognition, and she liked the different pictures and stuff. She really liked the lion. She's she's big into the big cats, if you will. So, um, you know, it, it's it's a fun game, and it, it really surprised me in a way. And I, and I, and I, if I had to um, suggest it uh, to anybody out there, if you're wondering, um, if you really enjoy... Um, you know, light to medium two-player card games. I think this is this is definitely right up your alley. And if you happen to be a fan of of Oz and the movies, or even like yeah, like the most recent movie they just had that movie come out with um, what's his face, the soap opera guy. Uh, you know, they um, you know you can if you're a fan of that, or if you're a fan of the original, or if you're a fan of the books. I, I think this this game moves into must-buy territory. I do think it works best as a two-player game. Uh, I, I know you can play with more than two players, but I think uh, it's much easier to be concentrating on one person uh, to, like, you know, you against that one person and trying to uh, beat them. And when you add more people into the mix, you kind of can lose track of, of, of the other players and where they're at and how they're doing. And, um, 
what happens then is, is that one person usually gets forgotten about and that person's able to claim victory. Or you run into the problem where, you know, everybody gangs up on the one person that's ahead and then everybody gangs up on the other person that's ahead and so on and so forth. And so the game kind of drags out a little bit and um, it, it loses some of its uh, freshness, if you will. I mean, this is a game that, that should be played and you should finish it up in a half hour uh, or else you, you it, it, uh, it overstays its welcome if you will but like i said it's highly competitive it's highly interesting the artwork is fabulous um the gameplay is very easy and, and straightforward and i you know i guess like i said if you are a big fan of two-player games and a big fan of two-player card games i really can't recommend it enough so uh there you go that's uh oz uh oz or i'm sorry the card game of oz uh go ahead and if it's something you think you'd like to add to your collection go to the uh uh, Kickstarter and um, uh, back it and so you can get a copy of that once it is published and sent to your door. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns or ideas or theories or whatever you may have uh, as always uh, post them below. I try to answer those as much as I possibly can. I know I miss a few here and there. Um, I, I do apologize for that. It's not because I don't appreciate your question or your comment. It's just that I am a busy dude and I got lots of stuff going on. This isn't all that I do. Uh, but I really do appreciate the fact that you took the time to watch this video. So thank you very much. And until next time, uh, this is Undead Viking. And I'm saying goodbye. And I'm telling you to have an awesome day. Goodbye. Bye.